on one page, for a start. If the art has come from somewhere else, maybe from another form, from a document, from somewhere else than just what you have in your mind. And also, if the consequences are important. If that web development firm doesn't get your contact email, ah, doesn't matter, you can go somewhere else. But many forms we have to fill in, really important. So it could be money, it could be stress. And I chose something which, if you don't go do it right in the UK, you can be sent to prison. Is that important? <coughs> Probably. So I chose tax. I like working on tax. There are many opportunities for improvement. And I thought I'd just start with three different women doing their tax and see which one we think is the most realistic. So first of all, Anna. Does this like, look like a real person doing her tax? She's feeling very cheerful. <laughs> No, no, not really. No, no. Okay. Okay. So, what about Maria? More like it. This more like it. And what about Lisa? Yes. Lisa's a bit extreme, isn't it? I mean, okay, tax isn't that bad that it makes you scream, or maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, I went with Maria because I thought Maria was about normal. So, which of these things is the most important for Maria when she's looking at the forms? Is it number one? The form was easy because she liked the way it looked and it was easy to read. Or is it number two, I understood the questions and I could answer them. Or is it number three, I knew exactly what I had to do and I got my tax done on time. So how many people thought number one? Nobody? Okay. How many people think number two? I understood the questions, yeah? That's a really in important answer, isn't it? If she can't understand the questions, she can't get it done on time. So that makes the last one happen. And I guess everyone else said number three, right? Because in the end, it's the task. is can she get what she needs to do done and she'll fight it until she can. So that's number three. So. My concept of forms is that users experience forms in three layers. So the first is appearance. If you can't read it, you can't do it. The second one is conversation. If you can't have a good conversation with that form, if you can't understand the questions, you can't answer them. And that's why number two was a good answer. And the third one I call relationship, which is to say, can I achieve my goal with that form? Can I do what I need to do? whether it's buy something, whether it's apply for something, whether it's do my tax, whatever I need to do. Can I actually achieve my goal with that form? So they feed in with each other. And a really good form works across all of those three layers. So a really good form will look lovely and legible. The same points that Justin was telling us about good fonts, clear layout. It will be a good conversation. It will be easy questions with obvious answers where we know how to answer. And it will be goals achieved. So mine as a user, yours as an organisation. If we can both achieve our goals, it's been a great form. So let's have a look at a little bit of that in practice. And we're going to start by having a quick look at how it works in Malta. I always like to see how tax works in different countries. And then I thought we'd have a quick look at um, the new gov.uk site, which is in beta, see how that's working on the same thing. So let's start with a couple of things from Malta. Are we all familiar with the Government of Malta portal? Anyone here work on it? No, okay, I can say what I like. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I think I can say it's pretty good. You know, Justin just gave us some web usability guidelines. It's got a nice logo, clear layout, nice and legible. I know it's from the government of Malta, it's not something else. Well done, Malta. And also, tax. It's easy. OK, I'll click on tax. And now I've got, I'm looking for tax, my tax return. Oh, there it is, personal tax return. It's easy. I'll click on that. OK. I missed one. That was my next click. Where do I click? 
Any suggestions? <laughs> Scroll down. Scroll down. Okay, so it's like, oh, there isn't anywhere for me to click. And I was doing so well. So that was the point that Justin was just making about below the fold. Because I've got used, after only two clicks, I've got used to the idea I'm going to have an easy click. It's, you kind of made it easy for me. And all of a sudden, boom. Oh, all right. Well, I'll scroll down. Oh, okay. Income tax return. Great. I'll click on it. It's not a link. Up to now, blue was a link. All of a sudden, it's not a link. Oh, dear. So there's a degree of keeping a level of consistency in what you show me and how it works. So I'll scroll down again. Yes, sign up. That's what I have to do. Little tiny problems, just a little bump in the road, could just be a little bit easier. So I thought I'd do a quick suggestion and say, well, okay, that's that page. Why don't we just shove everything up a bit? Oh, all of a sudden, I've moved a whole lot of stuff up. All of a sudden, I can see everything I want, the first thing. And you might say, well, what happened to the logo? It no longer says inland revenue anymore. Well, maybe it doesn't need to say inland revenue. Maybe it's good enough to know that it's the government. But we could maybe put the logo here at the top, or we could put it here, or we could get rid of this great big welcome message, which we don't really care about, and put it here, or we could put it here. So there's just a quick fix, you know, just to bring the thing the person needs into view straight away. Just a small change. So my first tip, design tip about forms, is to focus ruthlessly on what the user needs to do and put that first. Make sure they can get to what they need quickly. Just focus on it. So there we go. We'll go back to where it was. And the next thing I need to do is click on sign in. That take me, takes me to this page. Up, oh, change logo, I don't know why. Great big, boring, uninteresting piece of text, which is completely irrelevant. And in fact, the link I need is over here. Okay, so I'm going to register for an EID before I do anything else. So I get to this page. Now, is that legible right at the back? Not really, maybe. Well, I'll tell you what it says. It says, step one, go to the letter. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm going to go to the letter, which is a good thing to do. The only thing is, when I get to the office in the letter, it, let's hope that I remember to bring my ID card with me. Because right here, in teeny tiny little letters, it says, you must present your ID card. And I could be very annoyed if I made a special trip to the letter, and they say, did you bring your ID card? And you think, oh, usually I have it, but I just forgot it today. You know, very annoying. So it would be much better if it said, bring your ID card with you before coming. Before coming, yeah? Tiny little change, but it could make some people not be so annoyed. So, form tip two, which seems very obvious, put the first thing first. You know, if you need to check that you've got your ID card in your wallet, tell them to do that before they make the special trip. Everyone could be much happier then. So we've done, you know, shown that it wasn't serious problems, but a few little changes could maybe make that easier. So let's see how we do it in the UK. Here we go, we're on the government site. Search. Well done, they've done what Justin suggested, nice big box, nice search. I'm going to type in tax return, I'm going to type in tax return and press search and I get first link for tax return. Excellent. I'm going to click on there. Now here it looks like to me as if they can't make up their mind which font to use. You know, I've got that one, I've got that one, I've got that one. Okay, but anyway, get started. Okay, I'll get started on the HM Revenue and Customs website. Now I'm on a completely different website. All right, doesn't really matter, but I'm a new user, so I'm going to click register. Okay. Uh, okay. Can you read that? It says individual organisation agent pensions. Any 
Any ideas? Individual organisation? Uh, they're all links, yeah. So you, have, you have to decide what you are. You have to decide what you are, yes. You have to decide what you are, and it says personal transactions. Any idea? No idea what's a personal transaction. So if you happen to know that doing your tax return is a process personal transaction as an individual, it's easy. If you didn't know that, it's hard. So it would be very helpful if it showed you the word tax return. And the, li the page you get next is even worse. I chose individual. And now I've got all of these things which I don't know what they are. Well, actually, I do know what they are because I worked in a tax website for years. But do you know what they are? Would that, you know? That maybe. Maybe try that, you know, all of these different things. And the correct one is self-assessment. It's a technical government jargon term. If it only said tax return, that would be so much easier, wouldn't it? Then we'd know where we were going. So my third tip, which is really about the conversation, to have a good conversation with somebody you have to use the words that they recognize and they understand. And to use the same words all the way through. So when they started on this journey with the government website, we were saying tax return, and those words worked. But when we got further down, they threw away those useful words that we knew what we had, and all of a sudden, we were getting lost. So using the same words consistently really helps users to drive forward as they click through. And then here, finally, you remember I was saying when I went to Valletta, it would be nice if they told me I needed to make sure I had my ID card with me. Same here. In order to get to this next step, it's great. Okay, they tell me what I need. Where will I find them? It's not like an ID card, which I know what it is. So I'm going to click on that little help icon, and then I get... Do you remember I showed you right at the beginning a cartoon of a woman reeling back with a great page of text? That's what I felt like when I got this particular page. And it's a really complicated way of saying, well, you'd find it on a paper form that we sent you. So, you know, here's my suggestion for the UK tax people. Just put that text right there on the page where they need it. You know, just tell them what they need right where they need it. So that's my fourth tip, which is to say, put just enough help right where people need it. If they don't have to click for it, they're more likely to read it. <coughs> and I thought also, because it's forms, I really ought to have a quick look at buttons. You know, up to now, buttons in this form process, the buttons haven't been very important. And in fact, here, We've got a couple of buttons, and they look kind of okay. But what I want to show you is the typical eye movement when people are reading a form. So I've shown a slightly different form where I've got some eye tracking data. What people do is they look for the box to fill in, then they have a look about what they have to put in that box, and they go to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and so on like that. <coughs> now, we've worked out. Where should the button be? Right below. Right below? B, C. B, C. Some people say here, some people say here, some people say here. How many people went for B? I think B is the right answer. That's where I see people look. I see them go down, down, down. Oh, they'll start here. That's what I see. So, I observed that people look there for the first, and if there's a button there, they click it. If there isn't a button there, then they look here. So, that option C was a good choice, you know. If there's nothing where it ought to be, they'll look to the right. And then the third place they'll look is here. Yeah, they'll look across to the left. So, that's the order. So, these buttons here, not bad, but there's a risk that they'll click the back instead of the next. Because they're looking for a button, not necessarily reading what it says on the button. Another quick suggestion, 
next button here, back button here. You see how that would work? It's only a little suggestion, but like the same things, you know, it's just a little change can make a lot of difference to a user. So, just got one appearance tip for you, which is to say the best place for the button is normally aligned with the left hand end of the text entry boxes. Just like that, where people expect to see it. I was saying at the beginning this is about complex forms, and really complexity affects all the layers of the form. So, in terms of relationship, I mentioned a couple of things, which was putting, uh, focusing on what your users need to do first, and putting the first thing first, putting things in exactly the right order. And then in terms of having a good conversation, I talked about using the same words all the way through and putting just enough help where people need it. And in, in appearance, I just have one tip for you today, which is putting the button where people expect to see it. These things are part of an overall process. So I've got ideas about relationship, conversation, and appearance, and I hope when I get the opportunity to come back to Malta for a bit longer and talk a bit longer, we could dive into them in more depth. But I hope I've said enough in this, just having a quick look at those two form processes to give you some ideas that you might want to follow up. And I just wanted to mention one other one, that recently I had to fill in this form, and it really, uh, it was quite a challenge because I had to guess what questions they wanted to ask. But I did succeed, and I succeeded because I really wanted that to work. So, of all the things, if you really want it to work, you can make it happen. But wouldn't it have been much easier <laughs> if it had some questions? <laughs> so, it was, it was one of those little challenges. Um, I'm going to put these slides on SlideShare. Um, so if um, you'd like to have a look at them, and there are some other resources on SlideShare. So each of these has got different tips in it. And I'd like to uh, thank Morgan Kaufman, who's my publisher. They've um, given me copies of three books to give out, and which I'd also like to recommend to you. So the first one, which has come out most recently, is Usability Testing Essentials by Carol Barnum. Um, it's about how to do usability testing. Um, very clear, straightforward explanation of everything you need to know. Second one is mine, which I'm quite proud of. I'd like to point out that it's a thin book. <laughs> and it's got lots of pictures. <laughs> and the third one is a book which is by um, Ginny Reddish, who's my mentor. It's about writing great content, and it's called Letting Go of the Word. So if you write content or instructions on websites, then that's the one um, I would recommend to you. 